Well, hello there, Mr. Bad Guy. How are you doing? Nah, come on in. Set a spell. Relax. Yes, I did see that you broke my window. You broke my door. I saw that. What's that? Thought I wasn't home? Yeah, I get that a lot. Yeah, not your best day. Obviously, I'm home. Clasp your hands behind your head and kneel down and don't move. You're going to wait for the police, which, by the way, have been called. What's that? No, it's not an artillery piece. I know, it looks like one, doesn't it? I know this thing is like, oh, in your face. No, it's a KSG 25. 12 gauge, not 20, 12, dude. Look at the bore, come on. It's 12. Like I'd run a 20 in home. Come on, get realsies. KSG 25, dude. How many? Let's just say, for your consideration, a lot of shells. But if you have to know, if you're asking, 12 plus, 12 plus one. 25 rounds is what this sucker holds. No, it's legal. This is legal. It's not illegal. At least now it's legal. Yeah, don't move. Just stay put. Hey, I'm tired of talking. And by the way, no hot cocoa for you. Stay put. KSG 25. The ultimate home defense shotgun. Maybe you don't understand that it's with a banana. Oh my gosh, that's funny. Pulling it to shoulder is a little bit tough because the handle's so close. Welcome to the Nut and Fancy Tabletop <clears throat> Bunker review of this bad mamma jamma of a shotgun. Nut and Fancy, that's not a realistic scenario. That wouldn't be... Really? You think it's realistic? Get a sense of humor. Of course it isn't. We're just having a good time. Introducing the KSG-25. Time for a bunker review. Big shotgun. Big shotgun. With this VG on it, dudes, 9 pounds, 2 ounces on my scale. 9 pounds, 2 ounces. Which is actually, considering the firepower of this sucker, pretty reasonable. But here's a question, that intro notwithstanding. I mean, I intro with like kind of a home defense thing. I'm just having fun again. Could you use this for home defense? Uh, yeah, you could. I, I mean, I, I've shown you this look right here. Of course, that's intimidating. But I reviewed the regular KSG in 2012, and I think that is a better home defense shotgun. This is much too heavy. It's too long. It's unwieldy for me in a home defense philosophy of use. So I know I was goofing around with the intro, but this would not be my first choice. However, the TMP KSG 25, still okay. in the project, yep. has the same intimidating appearance. Yeah, and look at the short awesome. overall length, dudes. The bullpup, the quintessential, still after all these years, bullpup shotgun KSG. Seven plus like, seven plus on? one in this configuration. Really? This yeah. would be a better home defense option. And by the way, notice we've had this still. We have not sold our KSG. No plans to sell it. And yes, yeah. it does pull defensive duties in TMP. I, don't think so. I did say in that original philosophy of use discussion, the regular KSG is an awesome CQB weapon. Could you use a KSG 25 for that? Hmm. Well, you could, for sure. I mean, because we use regular 870s and 590s and 500s, I'm talking Mossberg varieties, for home defense, which is a CQB situation, isn't it? And they're just as long, if not longer, than this gun. So the answer is yes, you could use it. And this is a bullpup, so it comes very close quarters to your shoulder. All the firing controls are right here, so it's shorter in overall length to a comparable uh, of equal capacity, I should say, uh, conventional shotgun. You could, I would still go with, you guessed it, the KSG. As the review progresses, as always, I'll roll in our infield testing video of the KSG shotguns. You will see them in action, both the original version and the KSG 25. This is where we get our data from, not the internet, <laughs> not other reviewers. We make our own data. But if we're talking CQB, close confines 
maybe in and out of vehicles regularly, I'd rather go with a regular KSG shotgun, this right here. This one right here, CQB. Uh, you could, again, do it with a 25, but yeah, it's kind of an artillery piece. The bad guy thought it was a howitzer. <laughs> Doable, but it wouldn't be my first choice. Let me ask you this too. When, and this is not a political question. Now I'll, I'll address that briefly and then we'll press on to the focus of this question. When do you need 25 rounds of shotgun firepower? When do you need it? Well, actually the answer is whenever you want it. <laughs> That's the answer. If you're asking the Nut and Fancy Project, if you're a responsible citizen, a pro-constitutional law enforcement officer, the answer is whenever you want it. Okay, so that's not what I'm after, though. That's kind of a politic question, and, and that's what I'm asking. So whenever you need it, you should always stay legal for sure. But I'm saying practically, and think about this. Get away from the interweb hype and all the nonsense and all the stupid reviews out there. And ask yourself, when do you need 25 rounds of shotgun power? There are certain situations where I can envision it. And this is our POU discussion, right? So this is where we discuss this stuff. I'm sure you guys have your own scenarios. But I think it would come in handy during a point defense situation. Kind of like a rioting situation where you're protecting your house, your place of business, and that it's more of a static defensive position. I think then the answer is I could totally use 25 rounds of shotgun firepower, of pump action reliable shotgun firepower, point defense. So I think really the calling of the shotgun, at least one of them in their POUs, is a point defense weapon. Really not one that you're going to plan on reloading. Or maybe you will. I don't know. It is tedious to reload. I talked about that in 2012. It is. I think most y'all probably under stress would have difficulty with it just from our training, running and gunning in the desert. I mean, we had some troubles with it. And we shotgun, not a lot, but some. But a point defense weapon. Now, how about this one compared to Little Brother? Which one would you rather have, nothing fancy? In a point defense situation. Good question. I would probably go with a regular KSG still. That may surprise some of you guys because there's no guarantee I'm going to stay static. I could have to change. You know, I may have to be mobile and start booking it. And if you're doing it with this artillery piece, I'm kidding, um, get ready for a lot of weight. Nine pounds, two ounces, but let's weigh a box of 25 shotgun shells and this is just random they may be more maybe less this is just some fiokis i have nearby full box two and three quarter these aren't three inch shells so it's going to be even heavier and two pounds ten ounces two pounds ten ounces so we're what uh, I'll, I'll say two ten almost 12 pounds 11 and a half pounds of shotgun that's without sling maybe you add some optics to it right now i'm just running some inbus on here Come with a shotgun, I believe. Um, yeah, freaking 12 pound shotgun? <laughs> Running around with that? Whew, think about it, think about it. That's a lot of weight. It's real easy on the internet to go, yeah, I'm gonna be doing this and I'm gonna do that. Yeah, come hiking with me, bro. We'll see if you're carrying 12 pounds of weight. Not to mention all your clothing, first aid kit stuff, tools, knives, flashlights, food, body armor, anything you would need in your certain situation. Point defense. Specific and very limited application point defense is what I would say. Duffel gun, I said with the original KSG, it's because it's so compact, you can fit it in places where other shotguns won't fit, especially for a freaking 15 round capacity shotgun. It remains special to this day. Home defense, we covered that. Car to car. Yeah, so you have a slug option that will penetrate uh, car doors more readily if you're a law enforcement officer, glass, that stuff. And it fits, like I mentioned earlier, it fits in vehicles readily. Better than a conventional shotgun. Maybe better than 870, 590 or something like that. Granted, we have some very small uh, shotguns now, but they're usually without a shoulder stock like the TAC-14, the Mossberg I reviewed. This one has a shoulder stock, much easier to shoot. Couple other philosophies of use. Hunting gun, the KSGs, mm, no, I wouldn't do it. I mean, you're gonna have to plug these magazine tubes to be legal 
for most types of hunting, I believe. Love arcade. And I just don't think the configuration is great for hunting. It's a little bit uncomfortable. Insert my normal discussion on all bullpup designs. You're kind of cramped. You're over here. You're down like this. Uh, it's doable, yes. But my first hunting choice, no way. I'd go with a conventional stock shotgun, something like a Winchester 1300, a uh, semi-auto shotgun, a Beretta, <coughs> Mossberg, the stuff I've covered before. I wouldn't hunt with this. Uh, you could compete with it, though. Just ask uh, Chad Enos. He runs his KSGs for the company all the time. Good competitor, Chad Enos, friend of TMP. Yeah, so competition gun and a philosophy of use discussion for this artillery piece. <laughs> It's heavy. Uh, it isn't so heavy when I pick it up, though. The KSG-25 that I'm like, oh my gosh, that's way heavy. Uh, not really. For as big as it is, it's actually pretty light. One advantage it has over the, what, DP-12 of standard manufacturing? Am I saying that right? Yeah, that's it. Is a single barrel. So we only have one thick-walled cylinder board, 12-gauge barrel, two magazine tubes, which I like because that means it's lighter, a little bit lighter. The DB tw DP-12 has two barrels, two mag tubes, and it's portly. Uh, I don't know if I wrote a weight down for it. And I haven't shot the DP-12 yet, so I may love it. I don't know. But I have lifted it up. I tweeted about it, and man, it is heavier than this. At least it seems to be. And that's unloaded. But even this sucker, when it's fully loaded up, you're almost at 12 pounds, like I said, depending on the loads and your accessories you put on the gun. Let's talk about features. We're looking at some right here. Mag tubes at the bottom there. There's no screw in chokes. There's a company called M Carbo. It does have a choke tube conversion that you can put on your muzzle. My pro tip to you dudes is uh, don't waste your time. Uh, I mean, if you, I talked about hunting. I mean, maybe if you want to hunt with it, cool. Uh, there's another reason to put choke tubes on. I'm not saying it's just for hunting. Uh, you, you would put them on if you really want to tighten your pattern up, whether you're shooting like number four, double odd buckshot, and we'll talk about the patterning here briefly in just a little bit. So I understand that, that's totally understandable. So maybe with a full choke tube, you and I didn't try them out, I'm talking about a choke tube conversion on your KSG 25 in this situation, you'd be able to reach out to about 40 yards. Think about it though, I mean, I've always said that shotgun is a close-in gun. For me and my systems, the way I'd, I'd apply it, and for me, close-in means 25 yards or closer, unless I'm shooting slugs. If I'm shooting slugs, 75 yards with these sights, easy. They're accurate, maybe out to 100. I've talked and shown that in the project over the years. This is, what, officially year 12, 13 coming up of TMP. So go back, go back and you, if you're interested, you can watch that. And we have shot a lot of slugs out of this KSG, and it worked great. But as far as putting a choke tube conversion on it, extra weight, extra length, more complexity, you'd have to decide. Myself, I'd probably not do it. For now, subject to change. It's got a ventilated aluminum heat shield with M-Lock slots on it on the KSG-25. Looks cool and it's practical because you can attach lights on it. I don't know about lasers because it's not that stable. You have a sling loop on this side, dudes, see it? Yep. And then on this version, we've got the inbus sights, which are awesome. Still love it. That front blade on that one seems like it's a little bit bent. Still, still serviceable for sure. Then you have some tubes in the bottom here for viewing, if you want. I'm not really sure which generation of KSG this is. Caltech always changes their guns. They're always trying to improve their product. And so I'm sure somewhere in the dark recesses of the internet, you can find out all the changes to KSG shotguns that have happened over the years. I think this is a Gen 3, as indicated by this forearm. And I'll talk about something we had to do as we progressed, as the review goes on. Picatinny rail on top, it did not come loose like some other kel guns did while shooting. I think it was uh, RFB or something came loose on us. I think it was RDB or the RFB. I forget which one. And we had the Loctite. This one, we shot a lot of buckshot out of it. It didn't come loose at all. So nice. It's nice and, you know, lengthy. So you can put all types of optics in V on it if you want. I wouldn't waste my time on that though. It just add a lot more weight. Polymer four end. 
Picatinny rail on the bottom, and this is a port, an important addition to your KSG. And I said this in 2012, and you can see how we have ours outfitted. You don't have to run it with a VG, but I do recommend it, both for security, in other words, so your hand doesn't come forward in front of the muzzle, especially on this short one, um, which has happened. Guys have come forward, pulled the trigger. One dude blew his hand halfway off. You can look up those pictures on the internet if you want to get grossed out. But a VG allows you to prevent that. Choose a strong one. Make sure it's attached firmly. And then, you know, be careful when you're shooting it. Because you're very close to the muzzle on a regular KSG. But on the KSG 25, you don't have to worry about it. You're way back here. Here we want a VG just for being super purposeful for cycling the gun. Now you're going to see video of me shooting the KSG 25 where I didn't have a VG on. I just wanted to test it and it worked fine. I mean, just grasping it, you know, like you would a normal forearm on a shotgun, you know, off to the races you go. It worked fine. But on the shorter one, for sure, for sure. And be careful. Now on this big gun, I did shoot it with iron sights only. And there is a disadvantage to doing that. And I think I covered that in the original KSG review. Maybe I didn't. The disadvantage is this. When you have earmuffs on and you come down, the stock is very low. So you got to really get your cheek into the stock. And remember what I said in the original review, this metal plate here is cold in the winter. M Carbo makes a neoprene pad that you can put on there. Maybe some others do too. So you can put that on and mitigate that coldness of that cheek rest, but it's really hard not to pop your ear cups off when you're shooting your KSGs, if you've chosen to run ear cups. And I think most of us do. I have an ear, actually an ear plug in this side because my ears bother me today, happens. So that's why it's there, it's there on purpose. But I usually try to protect my ears like a lot. I'll wear at least foam, maybe silicone ear plugs and then earmuffs too. And then with a KSG, when both the 25 and the regular, if you're shooting them with iron sights, it's always want to push up, always, unless you do this. Put on a red dot sight. Again, this is a hollow sun, use my link below. Link below, hollow sun, I love these sights. They're so excellent. Now posting on Patreon would, will be me testing a like a $20 red dot sight that my TMP Patreon dudes asked me to do. And uh, you're just gonna have to watch that and see if it's an, you know, a valid substitute for something like a Hall Sun that is what I think like 175, 150 that I normally pay for these. The price goes up, up and down, and I get different variations of them too. But the point is, here I am pretending to be a lefty now, that now you're higher with your sight plane, and now your ear cup won't pop off. Plus, I just think it's faster with a bullpup configuration shotgun, or for that matter, any bullpup, to get your face a little bit off the stock so you can see and acquire your target better. Also, it's going to give you better field of view of what's going on there. And of course, with the red dot, I'd be like eyes totally open, squinting like I have a scope on. And uh, that's that. So I recommend you put a red dot sight on your KSG, whether it's a 25 or a regular one. Then we go to the pistol grip of the KSG 25. And just like most Kel-Tec weapons, it's uh, familiar. We've seen it a lot. PMR 30, CMR 30, some of their 9mm pistols, RDB, RFB. I like it. It's pretty excellent. Still, after all these years, I don't think they should change it. It's comfortable, provides adequate traction, not amazing traction. Decent. Trigger guard big enough for gloves. I'll model that in some of my shooting, I think, that you'll be seeing. And the trigger is pretty good. Pretty good. I don't have my trigger scale here. Did I write it down? That's a good trigger. I wouldn't do anything to that trigger. I'm guessing five pounds. I don't think I wrote it down and I'm not going to put it on the screen either. <laughs> now here comes some weirdness of the uh, KSG series, not just the 25, but all of them. And I mentioned this in the 2012 video. If you haven't shot a KSG, there's some funkiness to it. The funkiness is you're up here and this is where you're controlling the gun, right? Your trigger, You've got your action release right here, which is ambidextrous right here. No problems there. You have a cross bolt safety, which years ago I criticized and they never changed it. It's still kind of awkward. You'll probably forget it's on more than once. We did. And it's just fine. I mean, when you're shooting the gun, it's cool. But as soon as you have to reload, unlike, there I go, forgetting where the cross bolt safety is because I'm not trained with it. As soon as you need to reload, 
empty, then you don't stay here. You have to come back here. And this is where it gets interesting with the KSG. And you'll see our different techniques at doing this. Reloading it is a pain. I'm not going to lie. It's just a pain. Because to keep it up here, and there's probably guys that have perfect technique and they can do it. So I just rack the slide so I can hold it with a VG. So I can hold it with a VG. And I can actually feed out of an LB pouch and come up here. And I ha honestly have not seen how the competitors like Chad and those guys do it. Maybe they're doing that. They come up and you can feed it. But it's a blind proposition. You can't really see what you're doing. It's kind of like, I think you're just going to have problems with it. You're better off unshouldering the shotgun and then just turning it vertical like this. And this is what we did. And just using gravity to assist you. And now you just put your shells in. So here's your selector lever right here. And that's the latest gen. I know that's latest gen. I'll tell you why here in a little bit. And then you're going to feed from the side that it's pointing to. So this is the side I'm feeding from. I think I'm telling you right. I think so. Yeah. And so you can see it has an orange follower in there now. That's very cool. And then you load up. Yeah. It's, you know, 12 plus 12 plus one. One in the chamber if you want. But it's a weird process. And if you have gloves, you can get snagged down there. I've ripped gloves doing it. Uh, it just takes practice, and you will never practice with your KSG, be honest, unless you're a competitor. So with this gun being a point defense, that's its primary philosophy of use, says me, it's just my opinion, I don't think you're going to reload it. I think you have tw you know, 25 rounds, you're going to shoot it dry, and you're going to retreat to find a place to reload it. To me, that's smart. I mean, that makes sense. It's like, hey, I'm not just standing here where all the lead's flying. I'm getting out of here and I'll reload my KSG somewhere else. Or I'll transition to a secondary weapon. That. That. That makes sense. Yeah, maybe you differ. Maybe you have a KSG. You're like, yeah, I don't, I have no problems loading it. I will say this, though. Uh, I've never, like, shot the KSG so much that I, I feel like that I become an expert at it. And if I trained with it over and over and over again, I think my speed at reloading would get a lot better, like Chad, like the Caltech shooting team, other competitors, I'm sure. I'm not there yet, but and I have to review this because, I, like I mentioned, I don't think you'll ever be there because you guys are busy. You have lives. It's not like you can go out and shoot your KSG like every weekend. It won't happen. Now, when we talk about reliability, on my original KSG, I have had problems with this selector lever that it wasn't staying in position. In fact, I had to send mine back to, to Keltec to get fixed. And I had put an aftermarket one on there. I don't recommend you do that. I think I, I don't remember if it was an M Carbo or it was an aluminum one. It started just shaving. It just wasn't hardened aluminum. The ones that they use at, at Keltec, the factory one, even though it's not super long, because you can see how, you know, it just doesn't stick out that far. It is accessible, but it's hardened steel. So it won't shave off on you. So you can create a lot of problems with KSGs if you replace this lever. I recommend you don't. And they already come with orange followers, so you don't need to put an orange follower in there. Just run it as is. This is my mileage. But yeah, it's funky to load it. A little bit different. Talked about the cheek rest. And then I tape the rubber butt pad, which doesn't do a great job soaking up the recoil. I didn't really go out there, research, and see if there's something else we could put on there. And then attachment... Uh, attaching a sling is going to be a little bit funky. Basically, funky, you're going to wrap yeah. some nylon around this point here. I don't see any single uh, single point quick detachable flush mounted cups on this thing. But would you really want to sling this sucker up? I already showed you this sling mount up here by the muzzle, which concerns me because if you, uh, if you put like just nylon up here, it could flip in front of the muzzle. You could blow it right off. You could use a mash hook on this, and I think some dudes have put a mash hook on it. Let's look at the ambidextrous nature of this gun. It's pretty good, actually. Uh, the safety might be a little bit funky for you lefties. Jardine, yeah, he did help me shoot this. He did, and I'm gonna talk about that here in a second. Jardine liked it. You're gonna get downward ejection coming out right here. And remember, when you eject with force, it can come down and hit your wrist. We actually had bloody wrists when we reviewed the original KSG, this one right here. So I would recommend wearing gloves, maybe something stronger. I'm I'm wearing some old school mechanics right here. These are stronger than the pigs. The pigs are really bad. If the wind blows the wrong way, all the stitching blows out. Wear your gloves and it'll protect your wrist. But it's a little bit funky. Uh, cheek rest we talked about already and the sighting picture. 
Uh, how does it feel? Like the KSG 25, when you put it up, does it feel funky, nothing fancy? Because it seems like it's so weight forward. The answer is not really until you load it. Once you load it, it is definitely weight forward. I mean, you can just look at the mass right here. So we have all these, you know, maybe uh, two and three quarter inch, three inch shells coming out here. Uh, it's a lot of weight. I ain't going to lie. It's, again, a point defense weapon for me. So in a regular KSG, you can hold 20 1.5 mini shells, like the Aguila mini shells, if you wanted to go that route. And I think I did shoot some out of the KSG, and they were reliable, but I haven't done it in a long time. And I did not do it out of the KSG 25, but if they were reliable, dude, that's a lot of firepower. Oh, one more thing I want to talk about before we progress to how did it shoot the KSG 25. And I did talk about this in the original KSG review, and it has to do with mixing loads. Remember that discussion, you longtime TMPers? When this gun came out in 2011 on into 2012, the internet was a flutter about how cool it would be to mix loads with your KSG. In my original review, I kind of stomped on that, at least in terms of mixing lethal and non-lethal loads. I still never, never, never recommend you do this. It is super easy to get these tubes confused with each other. Even if you're super trained up on the KSG, I'm saying this. So you're like, oh, I'm gonna go non-lethal. Oh, I have a lethal round in, a buckshot, so I'll, I'll rack it out. I went to my non-lethal tube, now I put it in, in. In the heat of battle, you're going to remember that. Don't do that. Also, think of this as just a reloading lever. That's all it is. So it's just a quick reload. In, in reality, what you're shooting is, in this version, a seven-round shotgun, seven plus one, and you'll shoot it dry, just like we always do on camera. You'll dr shoot it dry, you'll click, you'll go, oh, crap, I'm empty. It'll take you by surprise. I said that in the original review. You come back, change your selector lever, and then it's the quickest reload in the West. Then you reload and you're back into action. Same with the KSG 25. Same thing. So you'll just shoot till dry, click, come back here. Again, it's a little bit awkward. You may have to hunt for it until you're trained up. And then you use your action release button, load it up again, back to the races. Now you could make a case, and I did say this in original review, of mixing lethal loads. Maybe in one tube you have buckshot, maybe in the other tube you have um, slugs. I could see that, but again, it's going to be super easy to confuse the two, and you're probably going to be a victim of Murphy's Law. Whatever can go wrong will go wrong. You meant to shoot a slug in this situation. You shot buckshot or vice versa. You thought you had a really clean, precise shot with a slug, and then you selected your buckshot tube, especially as a law enforcement officer. I just don't recommend it. I say just run the same load. Um, that's just me. That's just my mileage. Maybe you differ. Safety's in a weird place, still. Pulling it to shoulder is a little bit tough because the handle's so close. percent reliable. Right on the money. It's work going through a hole, two tubes. Especially with buckshot. KSG 25. Uh, thanks to Gunny's, the great American gun store, by the way, for allowing me to check out this KSG 25. Yep. Gunny's, the great American gun store. So if you want one, I would like you to go there first. Contact them and just have them ship it to you. If it costs you 25 extra dollars, you're supporting the gun store that supports the show that makes all this possible. How'd it shoot? All right. 
I have been pretty excited about the KSGs. You know this. But I'm super honest in my reviews. I don't pull punches. This gun was bad when we started testing it. And I will show you the footage of that. It jammed a lot. I mean, we had all types of complex jams that were very difficult to unstick. And it was frustrating. I mean, we'd shoot a few rounds and we get a, a a backward shell eject and get jammed in there. We'd have to break out the Leatherman or the Victorinox Cadet knife and somehow fish it out. Uh, and that's another, oh, I'm showing the wrong thing right back here. Here I'm thinking this is a conventional shotgun. No, right here. I am a little bit concerned about uh, this portion right here with still to this day of K KSGs. Because if you get a malfunction, it takes some time to clear it out. It reminds me of the Ithaca 37, which was also a bottom a bottom ejector, just like the KSGs. Not the end of the world, but if you get something under the lifter arms, uh, it can it can be a problem. And in the heat of the battle, that's a bad thing. I'm just going to lay that out there. I'm not going to say it's perfect with any shotgun, but it seems like this area here, it's not easily accessible. I mean, there's no accessibility on the side, the top. You're going to have to come in from the bottom and it may get really tricky. If I was running a KSG in a really serious purpose, I would definitely carry a backup arm with me. I'm just saying. That's just me. I'd carry a 9mm, probably my Glock, maybe a SIG, maybe TP9 right back there. That's what I do. I'm just being honest with you guys. So it had problems. Now, what I have found out about KSGs uh, in running them, and I don't run them every year. It's like during the review, you know, I... I, I I gear up and so we go out and shoot them a lot but you want to use a shot shell that has a really hard plastic on it preferably a high base shell I think if you do that you're gonna be pretty happy with your KSG's reliability when you go to a low base shell like a promotional load you buy at Walmart or something I think it has a lot more difficulties with that especially it seemed like with federal sorry federal I love you but the federal loads were really giving us fits they were still causing some problems and then we swapped over to a Winchester AA load, and it seemed like that ran, as I remember, 100%. And it seemed like they use a harder plastic. Maybe there's a whole bunch of information on the internet about this. I'm sure uh, trap and skeet shooters know all about it. But I'd use a hard plastic, preferably high base rounds. Um, it was so bad, actually, I actually I, I sent this back to, to Caltech for repair. There you go. I told you I was going to get to this. Here it is. So I spent money, time, shipping this back, even though it's not my gun, it's actually Gunny's gun. Holy I was like, hell. hey dudes, uh, here's hell. what's going on, please upgrade it. And they upgraded it to all the latest components. They changed it out. I did have a letter telling exactly what they did, but I forgot where it's at. Went out in the desert again, and guess what? It ran almost 100%, almost. When I put those softer, I believe softer, federal low base promotional loads in it, so we're talking uh, eight shot, seven and a half shot, we still had some chokes. Now my KSG during that time was fine. And by the way, at one time I had to send this back too. I know it's Caltech. What can I say? Sometimes you're going to get a Caltech that runs 100%, and sometimes it's just going to have issues. But and I've always said this in my Caltech reviews: after it comes back from the factory, it's usually pretty awesome. I don't care what it is; it's like 100%. It runs good. We've covered this so many times. I don't waste air time on it now. It is what it is. Caltech is just a strange little company, but they give us really innovative guns like this, so it's a quirk we just have to put up with. My point in saying this is run your KSG a lot with the types of loads you plan on shooting, and also run some promotional loads through it and see how it does for you. The loads that you're storing up, that you have in storage, you might be surprised that it doesn't like them. And maybe you too will have to send it back to, to Caltech. I don't know. Yours may be completely perfect. I do say, once again, uh, if you run just high base with it, uh, and I think this is a high base load right here. Here comes a Kershaw Skyline XL is my EDC. Blade HQ knife right here. Sick and OD. I think this is a high base load right here. It is. So this is what I mean. So see those brass loads right there? Or the brass bases? Those are called high base. So it gives a lot more support to the shell. The KSG loves that. It's going to be more reliable with it. And these, by the way, are not like uber expensive loads. These are... These are not buckshot. It's, uh, <coughs> excuse me, number six shot, if I can read that, 1330 feet per second, one and one quarter. So, in case you'll eat these up. There you go. With buckshot, with slugs, of which we shot a lot, 100%. How about shooting dynamics? How was that? Well, again, I talked about the scrunched up dynamic of shooting a bullpup. It's all right here. 
We've talked about the cheek placement with your sights. But other than that, with a VG, it's much more enjoyable. It's easier to rack that slide. You do have to be really positive in racking that slide. I think I induced some jams where I thought I was all the way back and I wasn't. It's just the weirdness of the KSG. And I think you'll be better in jacking it just slightly slower than uh, maybe you could with a really fast pump shotgun like a Winchester 1300. With a Winchester 1300, I mean, I'm just all day long, just super fast. I don't feel like the KSG is like that. I think you got to slow it down a little bit, be super positive all the way to the front, all the way to the back, run high base. You'll be great. Now, I didn't shoot a spread out of these. American Rifleman did, and they said at 25 yards, a 21-inch circle, 100% of their double-odd buck pellets hit the paper. So in a 21-inch circle at 25 yards, 100%. There were no strays. And that's out of the cylinder bore KSG. So I'd say that's pretty excellent. And getting back to my original statement on a cylinder conversion, I'm sorry, a choke conversion, I don't think you'll need it. I mean, would I shoot this as it is with buckshot out to 40 yards? No, I wouldn't. Anywhere out to 25 yards, home free. Keep it simple. Keep it as stock as you can. Only replace or add on something that really is busted on this gun. Says me. Says me. Now, on the KSG 20, I'm sorry, the regular KSG, I did shoot a bunch of slugs out of that. Go check out that review and I show the paper. But it's rare that I do it now because when I shoot, uh, not slugs per se, well, slugs kind of, but buckshot, it just tears my targets up and I have to go spend hours making a new wooden target stand. I'm just one dude, man. It's not like I'm this huge entity with a staff, people helping me out. <laughs> not these days. It's just me. So that's why. But accurate. Accurate. Uh, really fun to shoot. I did I did kind of gloss over the recreational philosophy of use on a KSG 25. Would I buy one just for fun? Mm, you might just think I would spring load into this and go, yeah, absolutely. It's so fun. Mm, the shooting dynamic on a KSG is, I wouldn't say super enjoyable. I'm being totally honest here. So I don't go, oh my gosh, this is such a fun gun to shoot. Because remember, your cheek is right here where the action is. The recoil's coming back in your cheek. I think a conventional stock shotgun is more pleasant to shoot. There you go. I'd rather go out and shoot my FN SLP. I'd rather go out and shoot a Mossberg 930. I'd rather go out and shoot maybe a Winchester 1300 if we're just talking fun. That's just me, though. But if we're talking more serious stuff where, you know, I need a shotgun in the mix of weaponry for whatever situation I'm dealing with, then I will take it. It's not unpleasant to shoot, but you need to train up on it and remember the stuff I talked about on reliability. But I mean, look at this, dudes. Look at this form factor. Again, this is a regular KSG. This is still my top recommended right here. KSG 25 for certain applications. We talked about it. This is amazing. This is a duffel gun, a car gun, seven plus seven plus one. I mean, the original KSG, despite all its quirks, is still one of a kind. Competitive options. I did mention the standard manufacturing DP-12. Uh, I don't really, I mean, I kind of shot that out of the water in terms of SAWC. I'll stick with that. It's, it's heavy. It's big. It's expensive. I think they're selling for like $1,400. Uh, a KSG-25 is going to be less, about $400 less, depending on which shop you go to. It could be great. I mean, they have two barrels on that thing. It's 16 rounds. Uh, nine pounds, 12 ounces empty. So even empty, it's heavier than this by 10 ounces. Uh, it has inline feeding, which a lot of people like over the KSG. The KSG does not have direct inline feeding. Uh, it has a spring-loaded recoil mechanism, the standard manufacturing DP-12. It could be awesome as a point defense weapon. Uh, maybe I'll test it if this gets like 100,000 views in a week. I talked about the UTS-15, the UTAS-15. That thing's a piece of crap. I still don't like it. I got a lot of heat from my original review, and that thing has tanked for sales. Nobody sells them. They just sit on the shelves. I think it's a low-quality gun. As far as I know, they've never improved it. I say stay away from that gun totally. Neostat NS2000, I don't even know if that's still available. Probably not. I mentioned that in the 2012 video. And then Standard Manufacturer makes some other unusual guns. They are semi-autos, though, so it's really a different uh, comparison shotgun to this, the SKO Shorty, that's a magazine fed gun, and the SKO full size magazine fed. Um, standard manufacturers in New Britain, Connecticut. Uh, maybe I review those one these days. Yeah. So overall, the KSG 25, would I buy it? 
What do you think I'm going to say right here? Do you think I'm going to say no or yes? You're going to say no, nothing fancy. Wrong. I'm going to say yes, I would buy it. Hmm, surprised you, didn't I? To understand, to appreciate, perhaps that surprising answer, go back to the POU discussion we had. Remember? Point defense weapon. There are certain scenarios where I can envision needing, wanting 25 rounds of shotgun firepower. Slugs, double odd buck, maybe birdshot, depending on what the situation is. But I don't really have to worry about reloading in most situations. That's pretty cool. It's pretty reliable once you get it squared away. Perhaps more reliable than a semi-automatic with that same level of firepower. I've shot a lot of Segas. Almost every time we're out in the desert, Segas are choking. And I hear a lot of excuses. Well, you know, I got to tune the gas system. Well, you know, the magazines were loaded for a while and the, the shells got all scrunched up, so it's not feeding properly. I think semi-automatic magazine fed shotguns have issues and I've seen them over and over again. Maybe they fixed them. I don't know. I'm always open to new technology, new ideas. Heck, I shot the magazine fed uh, Mossberg 590 DM. That had problems feeding. Haven't tested the 870 yet. Maybe that one's awesome. But if I shucked that one too fast, it jammed. A Mossberg 590 DM. It didn't like it. I don't know when I'll post that review, when I'll get it done, but it's coming. Join Patreon. You'll see it there first. So yeah, I would buy a KSG-25. It's a one-of-a-kind animal for what it is. Bigger gun, larger form factor, awesome firepower. Selectable firepower, we had that discussion for sure. Worth it? Uh, yeah. Again, I'm gonna tell you what I said at the outset. I'd much rather see you buy a regular KSG, this one right here. I think it's a smarter purchase. You can put it in a lot more applications readily and it still has incredible firepower it's seven plus seven plus one in this smaller version <laughs> again watch out for the muzzle here it's right by your hand you don't have that problem with the ksg 25 because it's about 30 feet in front of your hand <laughs> it looks cool though and getting back to my humorous intro it's an intimidating gun i mean i didn't really even talk about that i mean you're sitting on a roof with this and there's riots going on would you want to go to that shop you got two guys with KSG 25s who know how to use them sitting on top of the roof? No. Just so, once again, it's a win fine. from Caltech. Despite all the quirks, it's a win. Nothing fancy. See ya.